Hello, this is Retro Spirits Guided, and this is my 16-bit running gun shooters. Ranked! And this is across multiple 16-bit formats. You won't find any Neo Geo games in here, because people complain when I put Neo Geo in as a 16-bit console. Even though it is. Uh, we're going to do this as is customary, using the voice of a darts announcer. That's what you need to know. So no Metal Slug, no Spin Master. Number 14, Super Turrican 2. This is a platform shooter, which is horrible to listen to. Um, visually a little pre-rendered, which is never a nice thing. So any, none of the games on this list are super horrible. But this is the closest to being super horrible, I believe. Um, yeah, it's fiddly to control. Got the grappling hook, which is never a good look for me in a game, because uh, it's just difficult and boring to use. Uh, they've tried to take the Turrican gameplay and make it a bit more contra in this game. So you do things like getting tanks and stuff. Uh, but they've dressed it up with, uh, in kind of rank audio visuals, it has to be said. And, um, yeah, it's just not that enjoyable. It's okay. It's a very, very expensive game to buy on PAL, and it's not worth that money at all. It's technically quite impressive. You have a lot of stuff flying around, but the pre-rendered graphics make me feel sick. Number 13. We have Ranger X on the good old Mega Drive. Now, this game is beloved by a lot of people, in, I never really gelled with this game. Uh, on the six-button joypad, it can be confusing with the dual controls that you have for the bike and robot. I like the fact you can merge your robot with a bike. That's groovy. Um, I just find this game a little bit boring and a bit tough. Visually, it's quite nice, although it's one of the most flickery Mega Drive games in my Mega Drive library. In terms of graphical glitches. It does throw some impressive stuff around, like size-wise. Um, but like I said, I just never really got on with the game, I, and I'm not sure why. Um, it's an expensive game to buy. Uh, it's going to be about... Well, this is the Japanese version. It's going to be about 100 quid for the Japanese version. x Ranzer, it's called in Japan. Uh, the PAL one is probably 40 to 50 quid. The music and sound effects actually aren't very good, also. I'm just listening to that fart sound effect there. Number 12, we've got Mega Turrican. So along with uh, Turrican 2 on the snares, in common with that game, this has a grappling hook mechanic. Although, as you can immediately hear, the music is much, much better than Super Turrican 2 just in terms of tunes and quality, because this is like the original Euro-style soundtrack, which is lovely. Uh, using the uh, lovely Mega Drive sound chip. This is a bit more classic Turrican with the platform action. There's a lot, there's a lot more platformy than, um, say, Contra. But it is, it is a run and gun at heart, I believe. There's quite a lot of exploration to be had in the Turrican game. Not in the same way as a Metroid game. But this is it's all right. The only thing I don't like about this game is its insane difficulty. And the uh, when you turn into the little disc thing that rolls along the floor, it's just a bit weird. Other than that, it's groovy. This game also flickers. Number 11. Rockman X. So this is a platform shooter run and gun style game, uh, but a punishing one. It's got nice ish, nice ish, I'm drunk. It's got nice ish graphics. It's got typical Capcom music, which is wobbly trumpets and lots of reverb so that's not very nice but the gameplay is rock balls hard but it's just charming enough to be higher than the, the previous games in the list 
Like, I'd much rather play this in Ranger X, even with the difficulty. I do need someone to tell me which order to do the bosses in, though, for maximum effect, because you can get through the stages fairly easily with this game, but the bosses do require you to have the right weapon available to defeat them with any level of uh, efficacy. There you go, I've used the word efficacy. Um, right, main X. Yeah, it's alright. It's expensive. In 10, Ninja Spirit. Uh, this is a also a very expensive game. Uh, this is in the hundreds of pounds these days. And what it is is a typical run and gun style game. You walk along, you press the fire button to shoot. In this case, loads of ninja stars, or you can use your swords. You've got four weapons you can flip between. And this is basically it. There's a bit of light platforming in here. But this is more or less a slow arsed push scrolling shooter. Um, with some nice visuals for the old PC engine, nice and colourful. And uh, there's lots of sprites flying around, a bit of slowdown, a bit of flicker. But other than that, alright, music's not anything to write home about. Um, typical kind of early PC engine music, to be honest. But it is a pretty decent arcade conversion. Uh, it's just not worth the money, and it's not exactly exciting. It's fine. Like I said, all of all of the games on this video are fine, but not all of them are great, and that's where Ninja Spirit lets itself down. Nine. It's Assault Suits Vulcan on the Super NES, also known as Cybernator in PAL territories. Uh, I used to love this game back in the day. I played it all the way through multiple times, could do it on one life. Got to that point where I was that good. Uh, it's a mech based shoot 'em up. You have some shoot 'em up levels in here where you're on a jetpack. There's a bit of exploration to be done, but it is essentially a platform shooting game. Uh, you've got a dash move, you've got a weapon set which includes punches and the shield. Uh, there's no real puzzles, there's a bit of a st involved story which gets in the way of the action quite a lot. Uh, visually, it ranges from very nice indeed to very poor. Sonically, it's decent. Gameplay wise, it's alright, if a little confusing at first and sloppy. Uh, in terms of like, your robot jumping, sliding, it can get a little infuriating. Presentationally, in terms of like between levels, you get some nice cutscenes. There, they pump gum in your face, robot bastard. In eight, we have the Legend of Hero Tonma. Now, this is a nice little platform game, a nice little platform run and gun, where your caped hero and any hero that appears in game with a cape is all right by me. Jumps around uses his massive fireballs to mow down hordes of enemies. Quite a bit of slowdown, we've got a bit of flicker. We've got a twee soundtrack. But we have short levels, it's punchy, doesn't overstay its welcome. It's a genuinely kind of fun jumping around platform shooting game. I liked it on the arcade and I like it on the PC Engine. I'd much rather play this than something like Satsu's Falcon, uh, which goes on forever, this is a short and sweet little adventure in the ghouls and ghosts, ghosts and goblins kind of category of platform shooter. Ah, oh, look at this, shooting a dragon in the face with my balls. Take fireballs to the face, you blue bastard! Yeah, the only problem with this game is, like all PC Engine games, it's expensive these days. Eight, seven. We have Super Turrican, and this is on the Super Nintendo. Now this is the earlier Turrican game for the SNES, with a low capacity cartridge. And they have done wonders with it. They have given me lots of colourful graphics. They have given me a beautiful soundtrack. They have given me jump, jumpy platform action. So it's good. It's a good game. It's a little Euro shootery. A lot of the enemies take too long to kill. But other than that, 
I've had a lot of enjoyment out of this game over the years. What you will find, though, is the Super Nintendo version, specifically the Japanese one, is 500 English pounds to buy. And that's no good. I don't know how much the PAL one is at the moment. But if you can live with yourself and maim with this or emulate this in some way, I think you'll have fun with this game. If you want to buy it, yeah, good luck with that. That Super Terrapin is pretty, pretty cool. Especially for such a slow, low megage car. Look at that, Mode 7. Beautiful. In 6. This is Super Girls and Ghosts on the Snitz. Uh, this is a slow-paced version of the Ghouls and Ghosts formula, which is a run-and-gun platform game. Uh, they went a bit more platformy with this version over previous versions, but at its heart, I'm still running from left to right, shooting things with weapons, so I'm going to include it in my run-and-gun countdown. I don't care what you say. I mean, if you did come to me and say, this should really be a platform game, I don't think I'd argue that hard with you, uh, but I consider something like Mario to be a platform game because uh, everybody else does. <laughs> uh, well, you don't have the breadth of weapons in Mario, do you? This game has a lot of attacking uh, opportunities. But anyway, the music is low quality, the graphics are okay, it's an early game, lots of slowdown, but it is ghouls and ghosts. I can't argue with that. So it's cool. I enjoy it. I like the double jump. That's nice. In 5, we have Atomic Runner on the Mega Drive. Now you might be asking yourselves, why the hell has he put Atomic Runner on the Mega Drive over Super Ghouls and Ghosts on the SNES? Well, the top 5 or 6 really are super interchangeable. The reason I picked this one to be higher up the list it's because I've put more time into it. I've played this game much more than Super Girls and Ghosts. I find Super Girls and Ghosts a bit slow. I love the formula. It's just the SNES version is a bit slow and a bit convoluted. Um, so I've put more time into this. Visually, this game's nice. Audio-wise, it's all right. Gameplay-wise, is very, very strict. Um, but it's a challenge, and it's more of a shooter than a platform game. Uh, like I said, I've just played this much, much more, so I guess I prefer it to Super Grizzle Ghost. Uh, yeah. Cheap game on PAL, uh, expensive game on Japanese. So, uh, yeah, Atomic Runner. Surprise entry at number five there. Was it number five? Can't remember. Got short term memory gone. Number four. Eswat. I'm going to refer you to the previous answer I gave about Atomic Runner. I have played this game to death back in the day. I loved it. I loved this game. I used to be able to complete this game in one life. Um, why did I love this game? Maybe because I had no other games to play at the time. Don't know. But what I will say is, even to this day, it's kind of a fun Shinobi style platform shooty game. And. Um, Although things like Revenge of Shinobi and Shinobi 3 are definitely, I would say, platform games with shooting in them, this feels much more like a shooter with some platform elements. That's why this is on the list and they're not, essentially. Uh, we've got some tinny Mega Drive audio, because this is quite an early game. We've got some nice arcade-style graphics, uh, but we've got like a jetpack on level 3, and uh, it's just fun. I had loads of fun back in this game back in the day with this game. The bosses are cool. Yeah, it's, it's good. I've played it much more than Atomic Runner and Super Girls and Ghosts, so what can I say? Mission completed. That's what I can say. Number three. Now a game with obvious quality Gunstar Heroes. Uh, do I really need to justify this one being number three on my list? Probably not. It's a well thought of action run and gun game some platform elements, not a huge amount. Uh, yeah, it's just a crazy, crazy-ass Contra-style shoot 'em up where you run along and throw things. It's groovy. Everybody knows Gunstar Heroes. I think everybody's probably played the Mega Drive version. It's beautifully colourful. 
It's kinetic, it's lots of explosions, it's Treasure's first game, and they really nailed it. Oh, I love a bit of Gunstar Heroes. And back in the day, again, I used to be able to clock this one fairly regularly. Tried recently. Uh, forgotten the last level, what the last level does to you. Uh, but yes, there's a shoot em up level in here too. Oh, yeah, Treasure really knocked it out of the park with this. It's just a fun, slick game. You can't say fairer than that. With some amazing looking bosses. So, yeah, another game which I spent too much time on in my youth. Expensive on Japanese. Uh, and power rock. Into we have Contra Spirits, or Contra Three: The Alien Wars, depending on your region. Uh, this is number two because I spent too much time playing this as a child, as a teenager. Uh, this absolutely blew me away. Uh, I couldn't believe what I was seeing and hearing back on the SNES in not the space year 1992. Um, it was like a proper little arcade machine. Uh, looking at it these days, the graphics are slightly rough. The music is still epic. The gameplay is groovy. Uh, yeah, I love this game. Uh, some people don't like the top-down uh, rotate levels. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of those, but they are brief, which is uh, good. This uh, turtle boss has only got one leg. It's like a pogoing turtle. Poor fella. Yeah, uh, this game just felt like an arcade machine for the home. And that's why I used to play it too much back in the day. Number one is Girls and Ghosts on the Mega Drive. Now, this is a pretty good arcade port. It's not arcade perfect. But when I had my Mega Drive back in 1989, this game absolutely blew me away. I loved it. Loved it then. And I love it now. I, I hadn't played the arcade machine. Uh, I'd seen the arcade machine in magazines. And this port looked so good and played so well. And it sounds awesome. Uh, that when I tried it on the Mega Drive in the shop, it's the game that made me buy a Mega Drive, essentially. And uh, I couldn't get enough of this. I still can't really complete it very regularly. Um, it's a tough, tough game. Uh, but, a little rough around the edges. But I can't get enough of Girls and Ghosts. I just... I don't know what it is. It's the atmosphere, it's the music, it's the pace of the game. This is a fast-paced platform shooting game. With a crazy-ass theme. And I love it. So that's why it's number one on my list. Girls and Ghosts on the Mega Drive. Alright then. You probably have your own opinions about what your favourite running guns are. I don't own a huge amount of running guns, so it would seem. And like I said, I'm not really including Neo Geo games in here. Uh, I think if I did, Metal Slug would be near the top end. Because it is a unbelievable platform running gun. But hey, we'll save those for different business, huh? That's the one running gun games I've got ranked. Okay, thank you. And good night, sir.